Okay, chapter 11 of The Mandalorian, The Heiress, up next. Hello out there, I'm the oldest nerd. In season two, episode three, chapter 11 of The Mandalorian, we find Mando uh, coming in with his crippled ship uh, into port. He's able to escort the frog lady and most of her eggs. They have kind of a touch and go landing, uh, not certain of just how good uh, the uh, shore crew are in repairing his ship, but uh, he pays dearly and leaves it to them to do while he goes into town. A funny little thing that happens is that while he's getting the child something to eat, uh, it's some kind of chowder. Uh, something jumps out of the chowder and grabs him by the face, of which Mando says, don't play with your food. Now, uh, this is almost directly out of an old Three Stooges comedy, or several of them, really. They were always in some place or other where they were kind of out of place and didn't really know how to eat whatever it was that was being served to them, usually some kind of hoi polloi meal. And uh, inevitably, uh, uh, Curly would have something come out of the dish of soup or something and grab him by the nose. Uh, that's kind of what happened here. It reminded me of that. Um, we find out as uh, Mando goes with the child onto a ship where he is supposedly going to find some Mandalorians that it's a trap in which uh, he is caught and other Mandalorians actually come and spring him from the trap. And upon thanking them for their aid, they take their helmets off, much to his chagrin, much to his alarm. And just before he accuses them not being Mandalorian, they uh, point out that he, as a foundling, didn't seem to realize that uh, he was found by a religious sect. And uh, this religious sect never takes off their helmet uh, in public anyway. And uh, that is the way that he follows. Uh, he is explained by the under Mandalorians there are other ways. And he says, no, there's but one way and leaves but gets himself in trouble again, and they come back to his aid. Uh, turns out that on his longer quest to find the Jedi to return the child, uh, he is um, in need of help from other Mandalorians, and those Mandalorians that have found him are needing his help in order to take an old Imperial freighter. We find in this episode that the Empire is defeated, but there are still bits and pieces of it that are around. We found that out in the last episode of the first season where we were first introduced to Moff Gideon. And uh, what they are seeking is the dark saver, which Moff Gideon has, although they don't know it. And uh, neither does the Mandalorian. All of this is only uh, apparent to us, the viewer. Now, if you study deeper into the lore of Star Wars, you'll know what the Darksaber is. I barely do, but it is a very important element to the leader of Mandalore. The Mandalorian learns from his new friends that Mandalore is not as dangerous as he's led to believe. It was something that the Empire had put in in order to keep the Mandalorians off balance and away from their home world. And... Our special guest Mandalorian, Bo-Katan, uh, is the heiress to the throne of Mandalore and with the dark saber would be able to uh, reclaim her planet. And so the Mandalorian has to help them uh, gain some weapons and some advantage over the remains of the Empire in order to take Mandalore back. And in return that she would give him information on how to find the Jedi. So uh, it is very much in the formula of the Old West, the traveling cowboy with a quest uh, that uh, is helping somebody else on the way. Uh, the thing that comes to mind mostly is a Western, didn't last very long, only a couple of years, called The Guns of Will Sonnet. Walter Brennan was the main character here who rides with his grandson town to town looking for the grandson's father who is a rumored gunslinger. And as they go to each town trying to find a little more information about where his father went, they uh, then have to, they find themselves helping out the townspeople or the sheriff or somebody there that needs their help. Uh, it, it's very much a very classic Western trope, and uh, The Mandalorian does this very well. 
unlike what I was talking about last week when uh, it seems that you have to have a degree in Star Wars to follow most of the plots. The wonderful thing about The Mandalorian is that it's very simple. It's a Western with some high-tech and um, CG in it. Let's just put it that way. And uh, we have some uh, different species, some different characters, and uh, some different lore to deal with. But uh, for the most part, all we have to know is that he goes from town to town helping people. And that's how he did it this time. They were on a seacoast town this time. They actually showed a boat. Uh, while uh, none of the speeders have wheels, uh, the boats do actually sit in the water. So uh, that's uh, kind of a new thing here. Uh, also, we see some of the species, or at least one of them, I don't know the name of them, that uh, are kind of the fish-looking uh, species that have, uh, the, that the, um, the leader of the resistance uh, uh, was, uh, was one of. So uh, that's kind of interesting to see there. And uh, in the meantime, the uh, frog lady and her husband uh, made it with most of their eggs and uh, were able to see their firstborn out of that. So uh, all is well and tied up in this episode of The Mandalorian with a partially repaired ship is off to his next adventure. I'd like to know what you think about this. Please put it in the comments and, of course, subscribe and ring the bell so you know when it's time for another one of our videos. We appreciate your watching, and until next time, don't go far.